Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, I want to give you a clear, crisp framework for getting started as a freelance web developer in 2021, with which, with this framework, I have made thousands of dollars per month in past, and I want to give it to you for free. So listen up to this video very carefully if you want to earn money as a developer. All right, so we'll be discussing about five steps in this video, how you can exactly follow them and make money while freelancing. And freelancing is basically, if you don't know what it is, it's working for others online. So it could be a quick job or it could be a long project as well. It could range from as small as $5 gig to as big as thousands of dollars of a single project. So in this video, I want to show you a step-by-step -step procedure how we can proceed. Personally, I have used Fiverr a lot back in the days and I have earned a lot of money and did a lot of orders and completed a lot of tasks with that. I don't use it now, but I used to use it a lot. If you go to my Fiverr profile, you can see I've been using it since March of 2013 and completed, although it has 515 reviews, but I have done a lot of work out of Fiverr as well as freelancer and, um, you know, not all the people review your work as well. So it's close to like thousand plus projects, freelance projects so far in my career. But yeah, let me just go ahead and give you this framework which I'm talking about. Let's start. All right, so the first step is creating your account and setting it up properly on any freelancing platform. Now I'm gonna stick this example with Fiverr because I have used it the most, but you can pretty much take up Upwork, Elance, Upwork is Elance, but pretty much any other platform out there. So how does this work? So the way you have to make it work is once you create an account, make sure you set up your profile photo, your tagline, description, whatever it is, and a few active gigs very properly. Because first of all, I would not want to buy from someone who has an anonymous image and I don't know what, who the other person out there is. So make sure you use your real image. A professional one is fine. I mean, I just stick with this, although it's not professional, it worked out fine for me. But you also absolutely want to set up a gig, one single gig, which is your rockstar gig, right? You can offer a bunch of services, but set up your one single gig, which is your rockstar gig. And at that time, I think I created this years back, but I put out a lot of effort in order to create this portfolio of work, whatever I did so far. And um, yep, this was my rockstar gig in the sense that I actually go ahead and said whatever I can offer, I will offer through this gig only. Make sure you start set the starting price of your gig to $5, nothing expensive because you want to lure in as many people, as many buyers as you can initially, which I'll tell you why that is the reason. All right, so once you have done the first step, that is signing up on Fiverr or any other platform and setting up a few gigs, the next step which you want to do is actually go ahead and head into something known as a buyer's section. Now, most of these platforms do have a buyer's section, which in this case is buyer request. And what this section is, is that it will list how or what kind of people, you know, some people can post request here and let freelancers reach out to them. So it's like a notice area where people write their request and you can request to work with them, right? So this is probably the area where you would spend a lot of your time, especially in the initial days, as long as you don't have some sort of good reputation as well as no ranking in the Fiverr's algorithm. So make this page, make this area your home and choose it wisely because you get a limited number of offers per day, which you can offer, right? So you cannot just go ahead and you know create an automated script and do it for every single gig you choose, which you see right here. You have to be very careful in what kind of projects you choose what kind of gigs you apply for. And um, yep, that's that's something you have to be very careful about. Now, the important thing here is, is to go for the requests which have a low budget because that's where, how you know that it will be an easier project. You don't want to take up a very complicated project if you don't know that much tech. So go for projects which have low budget and also have relatively lower offers, right? So for example, this, I don't know what's the difficulty of this work, but this guy is not willing to spend a lot of money Plus, not a lot of people have applied for this. So if this works out to be something which you can do, then this is an absolutely amazing opportunity for you, right? Because you will be able to convert this guy, do the work and get a review, which is super critical. So make sure you are using this section very carefully in terms of how you're trying to approach because as a new person, the only leverage you have is price, right? So you want to go for as low as possible in the initial days because you want to break out of the audience. Plus, don't try to compete with these 110 people, right? You will absolutely have slim to no chance to getting this offer because there are just too many people, right? So you don't want to compete 
competition is for losers. My step number three is make sure you're doing this as kind of part-time or full-time work, right? If you're having a job on the side and if you want to earn with freelancing, do it like three to four hours a day. If you're doing it full-time, maybe like go six or eight hours a day. Why? Because you get these 10 offers, but a lot of times what you will see is that out of these 10, maybe three reached out to you for further communication. And you want to not just do their work, but also convert them first. So you have to work on your sales scale. You have to work on how you communicate with these people. So that will come with experience and experience requires time. So you need to spend a lot of time on these freelancing platforms if you want to understand the end user if you want to understand the end customer convert their project into a reality and earn money and a review from them so don't take this as a 30 minute or a 10 minute task per day but in fact get involved in fact if you want to break out if you want to start freelancing you have to get serious this is not easy earning money with freelancing is easy it becomes easy after a certain point but the initial days are very hard so you have to understand that and you have to maintain that mentality that in itself is a huge step that is why this is a separate step in this video but you have to understand how this works step number four and an important step here is you should focus a lot on the platform which you're working on that is fiverr in this case that means you should focus a lot on making your profile as good as you can on fiverr that means getting a lot of reviews on fiverr don't just create a gig and then you know try to get reviews somewhere else and try to just show it in your gig that does not matter the amount of boost fiverr will give you if it sees that your gig is working is not compared to all the screenshots and testimonials you're adding in your gig page right so what you want to do which i also briefly discussed earlier is that you want to go for simple gigs low budget and even try to go lower than what they have specified. For example, this person needs an expert programmer to create a small app to check a huge text list of 20 MBs containing the websites I want something. So this is, this is like a scripting task, basic Python scripting or JavaScript thing, right? If you know Node.js or if you know Python, you can pretty much figure out what API Alexa uses and just run it against a text file or whatever. And he's offering $15 for that. That's fine, that's a fair amount, but if you can, you should try to get this task for 10 or $5. And let me tell you why. Because out of the 18 people, which is not much, most of the people already have applied it for 15 or above, right? So it's either 15 or either 20, 25, whatever. If you can offer a leverage on the price front, which is like five or $10. And if you explain his, him properly, like the way you should send an offer is not like just a random, I can do your work. It should be proper. Like if their name is mentioned, then you can use that. In this case, it's not. So you'll probably just start with, hey, I checked your requirement of scraping Alexa for ranks in your text file, in your large text file, whatever, right? So what you want to do is keep the conversation very natural, start it very natural, but make sure that in your conversation you are able to hint the person that you have read the message because trust me i have used fiverr as a buyer as well and you will be surprised by the amount of people present on this platform would just send you i'm interested i would do your work that's it that's all they do for all the 10 offers and the first thing i do is just remove their offer as a buyer so what you want to do is keep the conversation very natural make sure you deliver the point that you have read their requirements which the sentence does, fine. It's better if you ask a follow-up question because you want them to reply. That's that's how you get them, get their attention, right? You don't want to convert on the first conversation. You don't want to say, order me. You probably want to say like, you know, ask any question. So maybe like, do you have a preference, F-E-R-E-N-C-E -E, for Python, Node.js or any particular programming language like this? And in fact, I know like this person is not technical, right? So they're probably just going to reply with do with whatever you want. But still, I wanted to ask why? Because in this case, maybe if they say like, oh, okay, I'm non-technical and you know, you just create the script, you can upsell them by saying that, okay, I have done this, but if you want me to, I can also create a simple web UI on this and that will be, then you can convert him, right? So then you can say that will be $20 extra. So you got the gig for $5. You can set the amount five here. You can say it one day, but you convert it after, you know, you upsell after you have got the person. Because now this person knows that, yes, you were able to create that script. Yes, you are confident. Yes, you know what you're doing. 
And this guy would probably make my life much more easy if I'm able to have a, you know, a web app or a URL where I can just upload the script and it'll just email me, for example. So then you can charge him 20, 25, $30 for this project, but try to get these new buyers smoothly. Try to get them quickly and efficiently, smartly, you know, just make sure your conversation is very formal because you don't know who the other person is at the other side of the table, right? So leave them with a question, leave them with a hook, some sort of thing, and they mostly respond. This always works, right? So do that. And last but not the least, actually go ahead and keep yourself upskilling on these skills because chances are if you're trying to take up your first freelance job you might not have a lot of experience right and it's fine it's completely fine to take a freelance job in development if you just have a little experience but what you want to do is number one gain experience from projects which you're completing here and number two just keep yourself upgraded as well with technologies so let's say if you're taking up web development gigs here you also want to create a gig which says, I can do your React.js work, or I can do your React Native work, or I can do your Next.js work, whatever. The way, the moment you do that, what will happen is that more opportunities will be present here because Fiverr platform, what it does, it, it takes your gig and then sends you recommendations according to what your gig is about. So the more gigs you create on different topics, the more opportunities you will have. The more opportunities you will have, the more shots you can take at bat right of getting a buyer once you get a buyer the more chances are that that buyer would be able to leave a good rating if you are good enough right and if you get enough ratings you automatically just start getting pumped up by the by the native platform as well fiverr in this case so in order for this to all happen the moment you convert your first gig, you have to make sure you complete the work and you have to make sure you're upskilling yourself so that you can be ready for the next part or the next work or the next challenging thing. So make sure you're consuming content from anywhere, like it could be Codedam, it could be YouTube, it could be whatever you want to follow, but make sure you're learning about the tech stack you are using in your freelance world. And just going back into what I had done back in the days, I mean, I still did a couple of orders for some repeated buyers last year, but these, these people are actually, you know, this person contacted me seven, eight years back as well. So that's why I did that. But you can see my last work was in 2018, right? So I'm not doing like freelancing for a very long time. And in fact, truly in 2016, because in 2017 and 18 as well, I just did a bunch of orders. But in 2016 and 15, you will see me doing a lot of work, right? And I did all of this uh, with the techniques which I mentioned you and there were a lot of happy buyers there were a bunch of sad buyers as well so it's, it does not hurt if as long as you're learning and as you are able to complete the work so that's completely fine but you can see I mean at one point I was making like thousands of dollars per month from Fiverr right so this is an amazing opportunity and all these icons you can see these are repeat buyers right all of these icons you see these are repeat buyers so it's most of my business also came from repeat buyers people purchasing again and again plus of course I also offloaded some of these buyers to direct payments like PayPal once we had established trust so that, you know, we can work on a longer project in a much convenient way. But yeah, I have done a lot of work and I have shared my five step framework and trust me, there's nothing more to it. There's no magic secret or magic formula you have to follow. These are the only four, five things you have to keep in mind, creating a profile, making sure you're active on the platform for hours, if not, you know, uh, I mean, you just have to be active for a long time. Put in the work, initial work would be hard, but you have to keep working and keep upskilling yourself. And for the upskilling part, here's a shameless plug for you. You can go ahead and start learning from full stack web developer learning path on Codedam, which consists of basically everything and anything you will need for freelancing and you know completing these initial orders. It starts with a very small subscription amount, which you probably would cover in your first gig, right? So just go ahead and start learning for full stack web development for free from Codedam and even if you want to upgrade to Codam Pro, the first month subscription or, you know, the monthly subscription of Codam is probably way less than what you will make in, a f in the first week of your freelancing. I can assure you that. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. You can find basically all the links in the description, even for joining Fiverr. That is all for this video. If you liked it, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Share it with your friends who are trying to get into freelancing. And I'm going to see you in the next video really soon.